we are going to discuss one of the most important theorems in ordinary differential equations is Picard's existence theorem for first order ordinary differential equations. Why is Picard's theorem so important? One reason is it can be generalized to establish existence and uniqueness results for higher order ordinary differential equations and also for systems of uh, differential equations. Apart from this, it is a good introduction to the broad class of existence and uh, uniqueness theorems that uh, based on fixed points. What is the statement of Picard's existence and uniqueness? Suppose fxy be a function and its first order partial derivative with respect to y, dou f by dou y are continuous functions in some open rectangle where x lies between a and b y lies between c and d that contains the point x0 y0 then the initial value problem has a unique solution in some closed interval where h is positive moreover the picard's iteration defined by yn plus 1x equals to y0 plus integral x0 to x f of t y n t t t. It produces a sequence of functions y n x that converges to this uh, particular solution uniformly on interval i. For this let us consider an example. Here the initial value problem y dash equals to 3 times of y power 2 by 3 y of 2 is equal to 0. Here f x y 3 times of y power 2 by 3 the first order partial derivative to this function with respect to y 2 times of y power negative 1 by 3. Here f x y is continuous when y is equal to 0 but dou f by dou y does not exist when y is equal to 0. According to the hypothesis of Picard's theorem it does not exist. We came to conclude that this initial value problem has two solutions. One is the non-trivial solution, second one trivial solution. y power 1 by 3 equals to x negative 2 is a non-trivial solution, y is equal to 0 is a trivial solution. There are many ways to prove the existence of a solution to an ordinary differential equation. The simplest way is to find explicit one. It is a good approach for uh, separable equations, exact equations as well as uh, linear equations with constant coefficients. But unfortunately there are uh, many equations that cannot be solved by the elementary methods. So attempting to prove the existence of a solution with this approach is not at all practical. An alternative approach is to approximate a solution to the initial value problem by constructing a sequence of functions that converges to the solution. It is precisely uh, the approach uh, we will use for the proof of the Picard's theorem. Now, before we discuss the idea behind successive approximations, let us first express a first order initial value problem as an integral equation. For the initial value problem y dash equals to f x y with y x not equal to y naught suppose the function f is continuous on some appropriate rectangle and that there is a solution y x. It is a continuous on the interval i. Then we can integrate both sides of the differential equation to obtain an integral equation y x equals to y naught plus integral x naught to x f of t y t dt. Thus under the assumptions of existence and continuity the initial value problem is equivalent to the integral equation. In fact uh, it is convenient and useful at the first glance but uh, based on closer inspection we notice two problems. 
the integral equation is not well defined unless we know that a solution exists here well defined means what we have t y t must be in the domain of f x y for example the function f x is 1 by 1 minus x is well defined for all values of x not equals to 1 but if x is equals to 1 the function f of x is undefined uh, let us consider an initial value problem y dash equals to 2y with y0 equals to 1 this initial value problem is equivalent to y is equals to 1 plus integral 0 to x 2y dt therefore the picard iterates are the first one initial solution y not x is equals to 1 the first iteration y1 x is equals to 1 plus integral 0 to x 2 times of y naught dt it gives us 1 plus 2 x y2 of x 1 plus integral 0 to x 2 y1 t 1 plus 2 t dt it gives us 1 plus 2 x plus 2 x whole square by 2 factorial and so on. It can be shown by induction that the nth iterate is y n x equals to 1 plus 2 x plus 2 x whole square by 2 factorial plus 2 x power n by n factorial. In the closed form it is the sigma i is equals to 1 to n 2 x power i by i factorial which is the nth partial sum of the Maclaurin series for uh, e power 2 x. Thus as n tends to infinity we came to conclude that y n x tend to e power 2 x. So to carry out a rigorous test for the convergence we need some idea of distance between functions.